today for a boring lecture about database fundamentals. <laughs> I have to say that's not the that's not the answer I expected. <laughs> well, you're not going to get one. Sorry to disappoint you. Here's what I'm going to do instead. Um, Presumably, and my guess is that most of you have some idea about a database. I know some of you have had the database class um, because I had you in class, and, and some of you I know have a little bit of database in your background. So what I want to do instead is have an activity. This activity you are required by law to work with someone on, okay, whether you want to or not. All right, because I want you to bounce ideas off of each other and and so on. Um, when you, how do I want to put this? Designing a database, you can be given a number of different starting points to design your database. Let me give you some typical scenarios that you might get for designing a database. You might get someone's Excel spreadsheet or spreadsheets. And they give it to you and they say, here, this is what we have. Because of all the reasons that databases are superior to Excel, we want you to take and create a relational database from these Excel spreadsheets or sheet. That's one real common possibility. Second possibility is you might be given documents. All right. In other words, you might, they might give you a sampling of invoices a sampling of student schedules, a sampling of degree programs, give you the documents, and you can glean from that um, the database structure. All right? Or you can conduct an interview with people. All right? In other words, you talk to people about you know, what, what, they're, what, what business problem they're trying to solve, what problem with the organization are they trying to solve, what kind of data they have, how does the data relate to each other and so on and so forth. So, with that in mind, I'm going to present to you a database problem, sort of a combination of the second and the third method. I'm going to talk about it, about it as though you were interviewing me, and I'm going to show you some quasi-documents, some sketches of maybe what I want my web pages to look like, all right, um, in, in in contracting you to develop the database for my website. So all these things typically exist in combination. In other words, you, you typically don't get everything you need from a spreadsheet, typically don't get everything you need from documents, typically don't get everything you need from an interview. You get it by a combination of those things often. Uh, and as far as interviews go, often it's good to talk to a bunch of different people because as we all know, and again, do note that I am saying this without a trace of disrespect to anyone, but managers often have a very different view of the world than employees do. All right? So you can insert your own joke there if you want, if you've had a bad experience with managers. All right? But it's true. Even the good ones have a different view of the world than the typical in the trenches employees. All right? Now, what are we going to do? What's our database problem? The database problem that we're going to solve is to do an online polling system. All right? Let me describe to you what the online polling system will be like. All right? Let's say that I, want, I have this great idea for a website, so I'm contracting you to build the database for this. My hope is, is by going through this activity, I can get a sense where everyone is, or where the class is collected as far as databases. So I know what, what I need to cover, what I need to talk about, what we need more practice in, and so on. Um, it will also be a chance to review the terminology, because as we're going through this example, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll hit some of the definitions and terms. All right, at any rate, yeah, what's making that reflection? Okay. Probably okay. <laughs> I remember when I was a little kid, I, those used to, I used to love those things. I used to follow them around because I was, I'm sure, at a, you know, I, I actually remember back to where I was mystified where they came from. I thought they were something flying around the room. All right. I wasn't that smart as a little kid. <laughs> um, and I know you guys are thinking, as a little kid? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. So here is the, here is the site. First of all. And I'm going to list some requirements. We're going to sketch out some sample screens. Requirement number one, you have to be a logged in user 
to participate. And by participate, I mean answer poll question or leave comments. I'm envisioning something like this. I'm envisioning, envisioning a drop down where I have a category of poll. So, there might be polls about technology, politics, sports, culture, any number of things. So there's a list of categories. When I select a category, I want to see a listing of all the polls that fit that category. So I have a search button. And it will return a list of polls, poll questions, that fit that category. So I could pick um, technology, and there could be a list of five different poll questions. All right? Each question is considered to be sort of like self-contained. In other words, the questions um, you know, belong to a category, but um, it's not as though like there'll be four questions about Android. Each one of these corresponds to one question. All right? So maybe the category is technology, and the poll question is, do you prefer Android? or iPhone, or other. So you're saying that when you, when you hit the um, drop down, and then you click on something, and when you hit submit, you get five questions down? You get however many questions there are for that category. Right. Right. So I'm just saying that if you pick technology, maybe one of the questions would be this. The user then can click on this question and see the question. And see a list of the answers. And the user can vote in the poll. All right? So they can pick what they have and click submit and submit their vote. Now, a user can only vote once in a poll. So I couldn't log in today and, and, and vote, and I couldn't log in the next day and vote again in the same poll. By the way, each poll only belongs to one category. All right? So although the question of Android or iPhone could potentially be considered a political issue or possibly even a religious issue, <laughs> it only belongs in one category. And so we'll say in this case it belongs to the technology category. So only one. You get the question when you click on it. You get the list of potential answers, and you get a submit button. You can submit it. All right? Registered users can also comment on a poll. So they can put in a comment. Actually, we won't put it on this screen. We'll put it on another screen. But users can comment on the poll. And you can comment on the poll as many times as you want. Because as we all know, comments on the internet tend to be intellectual discourse of the highest level. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right? And so I'm sure our site will be no different and, and people will groundbreaking logic and, and well-reasoned arguments to support their view. So where do these comments appear? Well, there'll also be a results page. In fact, we'll make two links here. We'll make a vote and a results page. 
And the vote page and uh, the vote page looks like this. The results page shows, you know, the question. And the breakdown. So maybe 49%, 48%, 3%. And then there's a list of comments that are displayed underneath it where people can post their comments. And a user can only vote once. but can comment multiple times. And you don't even really have to vote to comment. So I could comment on the poll that says, this poll is stupid. This poll is stupid. Right. Well, no, wait a minute, because we said there's only going to be high-level intellectual discourse. This poll is not up to my level. It's not up to my level. I have much more important things to consider in my life than platform or whatever, all right? But you can comment multiple times on it. So you don't have to vote to comment, and you don't have to comment if you vote, but you can do that. But for both commenting and voting, you need to be uh, a registered user of the site. Okay. This could very well be what you get to design the database, all right? It's sort of giving the outputs, or like the documents, along with my little bit of narration that explains some of the, the special rules to it. All right? So what I want you to do is I want you to define, de define, design, that's why, that's why I was getting stuttered. I, wanted to, I wasn't sure if I wanted to say design or define, but I want you to create the design of a database for this problem. And I want you to work on it together. And I'm going to play it by ear to see how long this is going to take. All right? So theoretically, we could take all of the rest of the class, and then we discuss it on Thursday. Or if it takes about a half hour for you to get settled, we'll go for a half hour, and then we'll, we'll, uh, you know, then, then we'll discuss it collectively. So. Divide yourselves into teams of two or three. I don't know how many people are in the room. But divide yourselves into teams of, uh, of two or three and start designing. Wait a minute, what, is, what does Tim Gunn say? Designers? Oh, come on, like I'm the only one that watches that Make show. Pardon me? Make it work. Make it work, yeah, thank you. I just couldn't remember his catchphrase. It's been a while. Uh,